Hi folks, welcome to the channel. If you're a new or returning subscriber, please remember to like our videos, provide comments to help us with continuous improvement to our content, share with friends and family, and most importantly, subscribe. Thank you. Hi folks, now let's have a look at this compatibility equations problem. So the question reads, a cast iron cylinder is filled with concrete and used as a pillar to support a weight of 40 kilonewtons. The cylinder is 0.5 meters outer diameter and 0.49 meters inner diameter. Determine the stresses in the iron and the concrete. So we've been given some information. So we are to assume that the Young's modulus for concrete equals 10 gigapascal and that of cast iron equals 205 gigapascal. And these are the expected results at the end of the problem. So we are expected to get a result of 115 kilopascals and 2.36 megapascal for one of the given materials. So this is a very quick representation of the problem we're trying to solve. So on the right is a diagram of the pillar so the blue cylinder represents the concrete core and the orange represents the cast iron casing. On the left is a simple force diagram showing the state of equilibrium between the load limit, which would be 40 kilonewtons, against the reactions from the material or from the pillar. So that will constitute the reaction from the concrete core and the reaction from the cast iron cylinder. So this is a diagram of the problem that we're trying to solve. So we've got our load limit, so that would be 40 kilonewtons. And to ensure that this external force is in equilibrium with um, the forces in the pillar, then we're going to assume that the reaction from the cast iron casing, so let's call that FCI, F C I and that from the concrete core, so the reaction from the concrete core, let's call that F C C. The sum of all these forces should equate to zero. So if we're assuming that the sum of the forces vertically is equal to zero, then this implies that. So let's call this WL. This implies that minus WL. So don't forget our sign convention. Okay, I always assume that forces moving rightwards positive, forces moving leftwards negative, forces moving up positive, forces moving down negative. So since the force of uh, the load limit is downwards, that while I've given it the negative sign convention. So since the reactions are moving upwards, then they will have the positive sign convention. So plus FCI plus FCC all sum up to zero, which means that WL will be equal to the sum, the total sum of the reaction. So sigma of FCI plus FCC. So let's call that equation one. Okay. Now we also know from first principles that the stress so sigma is equal to the ratio of the force to the area. So we can redefine the reactions in terms of sigma. So F is equal to the product of sigma and A. Okay. So we're going to redefine the reactions. So reaction in cast iron casein. So that is FCI. 
W equal to sigma A CI. And the reaction in concrete core F C C equal to sigma A C C. So we're going to substitute these into equation one. So therefore W L will be equal to sigma A respect to C I plus sigma A respect to C C. So let's call that two. So we've been given some information to enable us to calculate the areas. So let's proceed to calculate the area of the concrete core. So the area of concrete core, so that's ACC, that'll be equal to pi over 4 sine dcc squared. Okay, so dcc squared, so the diameter of the concrete core, from the problem, was given as 0 0.49 meters. Therefore, acc is equal to pi over 4 sine 0 0.49 squared. So let's bring our handy calculator. So pi over 4 times 0 0.49 squared. And that equates to 0 0.1886 meters squared. So we've worked out one cross-sectional area. So for us to calculate the area of the outer casing, so that's the cast iron casing, that's A C I, that'll be equal to pi over four times the difference of the outer diameter squared minus the inner diameter squared. Okay, so the inner diameter is the same as the diameter of the concrete core. DCC. Okay, and this was given as 0 0.49 meters. And from the question, the outer diameter was given as 0 0.5. So outer diameter is given in the product 0 0.5 meters. So therefore, a C I is equal to pi over four times into bracket zero point five squared minus zero point four nine squared. If we bring our handy calculator, so this would be equal to zero point five squared minus zero point four nine squared that equals times pi over four. And that gives 7.7754 times 10 to the power minus 3 meters squared. So we've calculated the areas. So we can substitute the known values into equation 2. So redefine equation 2. Then 40, 
I'm working the basis of kilonewtons, so I don't need to break um, the kilo here. Is equal to into bracket 7.7754. I send it per minus three sigma ci plus into bracket zero point one eight eight six sigma cc. Okay, first we should find and call that equation three. So we've done one bit. Now the next bit, we're going to assume that the extension. Delta P, so that is the extension in the pillar, will be equal to the extension in the materials that forms the composite. So that will be equal to delta CI, which will be equal to delta CC. Okay, so this is extension in outer case. And this is equal to the extension in the concrete core. So if we're assuming that to be the case, then the strain respect to the outer casing will be the same as the strain experienced in terms of the concrete core. So since from first principle, we know that the stress is equal to the product of the strain and the Young's modulus, then we can redefine this equation for the strain to be equal to the ratio of the stress to the Young's modulus. So we're going to redefine the strains with respect to sigma and A. So, epsilon sigma over E with respect to CI is equal to sigma over E with respect to CC. So we've established another equation if we're assuming that the strains are equal within the composite. So, we can decide on which of the stresses to solve first. So in this instance, I'm going to solve for the stress in the concrete core. So if we're going to solve for stress in concrete core, so that is sigma cc, then what we're going to do is we're going to make ci, sigma ci the subject, and substitute sigma ci, what well, that equates to, into equation three. So sigma ci equal to sigma cc times e ci over e cc. Okay. And we know that e ci is given in the form to be 205 GPA. We know that e cc is given as 10 GPA. The GPAs will cancel out, so that should make life fairly easy. So sigma ci will be equal to sigma cc into bracket 205 over 10. So we substitute this into uh, the equation. So let me just rewrite this again. Um, let's see. Let's put this there. There's other two known variables, so as I stated, um, the gigapascals will cancel out, so sigma ci equal to sigma cc into bracket 205 over 10. Okay, so we can simplify that, so that sigma ci equal to 20.5 sigma cc, so let's call this equation three. Okay. So we substitute equation three into equation one. So equation one.
there we can have 40 is equal to 7.7754 times 10 to the power minus 3 into bracket 20.5 sigma cc plus 0.1886 sigma cc. So we now have an equation with one unknown. So we can simply solve for cc. So therefore, solving sigma cc, so that is the stress in concrete core, then 40 is equal to, so let's bring our handy calculator, so 20.5 times 7.7754 times 10 to the power minus 3, that would give um, 0 0.1594 sigma cc, that's so 0 0.1886 sigma cc. So we've got two variables which are the same, so we can easily add these up. So 40 is equal to 0 0.1 594 plus 0 0.186 and that gives 0 0.348 sigma cc. So dividing both sides by 0 0.348 then sigma cc is equal to 40 divided by 0. 348. Okay, and we should forget that that is already kilo. Okay, so we've got kilo. And we can put PA there. Okay. So 40 divided by 0 0.348. And that gives 114. Point nine four three kilo pascal. Okay, so which is the same as one hundred and five, one hundred and fifteen kPa. So now that we saw for sigma cc. We can then solve for sigma ci. So 40 is equal to sigma a ci plus sigma a dc. Okay. So let's redefine this equation. So this becomes. 40 minus sigma a cc and that's equal to sigma a c i. So if we divide both sides by a c i then Sigma CI be equal to 40 minus sigma A CC all divided by A CI. Okay. This instance we shouldn't forget to bring the 10 to the power of 3. Okay, so that's 40 kilo. All right, so we can then substitute our non variable. So therefore, um, solving for the stress in outer cat iron caser, so sigma CII, then sigma C 
I will be equal to 40 times 10 to the power of 3 minus into bracket 115 times 10 to the power of 3 times the cross section area of the concrete core, so that was 0 0.1886, or that being divided by 7.7754 times 10 to the power minus 3. So let's do this computation. So we've got into bracket 40 times 10 to the power of 3 minus into bracket 115 times 10 to the power of 3 times 0 0.1886 bracket bracket and that's equal to this is a different color so that is equal to I might just write it here 18,311 divided by 7.7754 times 10 to the power minus 3. I'll divide it by 7.7754 times 10 to the power minus 3. And that gives 2, 3, 5, 4, 9, 9, 1.383 and that will be a Newton per meter squared. So that is 2,354,991.383 Newton per meter. So that will be 2.355 times 10 to the power 6 Newton per meter squared. The same as 2. Point Three, five, or let's do that. Two point three six m p a. And there we have it. So now that we've worked through the problem together, let's have a quick look at a summation of what we've just done. So the first part is for us to calculate the cross-sectional area of the concrete core. So the concrete core we're denoting the area as ACC, and that's equal to pi over 4 times DCC squared. So DCC is the diameter of the concrete core, which was given the problem to be 0 0.49 meters. So that equates to pi over 4 times 0 0.49 squared, and that yields a result of 0 0.1886 meters squared. To calculate the area, the cross-sectional area of the cast iron casing, that will be the difference of the diameter squared times pi over 4. So that's equal to pi over 4 times into bracket the outer diameter squared minus the inner diameter squared. So this will be equal to pi over 4 times into bracket 0 0.5 squared minus 0 0.49 squared and that will yield a result of 7.7754 times 10 to the power minus 3 meters squared. So we've calculated the areas. So from one of the diagram, we stated that there will be a state of equilibrium between the applied load or the weight that's acting on the column to the reaction from the material. So applying the equation of equilibrium, sums of the forces in Y or the sum of the forces vertically will equate to zero meaning that the force in terms of the cast iron material plus the force in terms of the reaction from the concrete minus the load on the column so that would be WL will equate to zero. So the weight limit or force limit W subscript L will be equal to the reaction in the outer case and plus the reaction in the concrete core. So from first principles, stress is equal to the force divided by the cross-sectional area. So we can redefine the reactions in terms of the stress and the cross-sectional area. 
by defining f subscript ci to be equal to sigma a with respect to ci and likewise for the reaction in the concrete core fcc will be equal to the product of its stress and cross-sectional area with respect to cc so therefore we can redefine the equation one as the weight force limit w subscript l be equal to sigma a with respect to ci plus sigma a with respect to cc so substituting the known variables that we do know and we've calculated the 40 will be equal to 7.7754 times 10 to the power minus 3 sigma ci plus 0.1886 sigma cc so if we're assuming that the extension in the outer casing and the concrete core are equal and that the lengths original lengths are equal then we can also assume that the strains experiencing the outer casing and the concrete core will also be equal so since sigma epsilon sorry is equal to the ratio of the stress to the Young's modulus of the material then we can redefine the strengths in the outer casing and the concrete core as follows the ratio of sigma the ratio of sigma to E with respect to CI will be equal to the ratio of sigma to E with respect to the concrete core. So if we're assuming that we're going to solve for the stress in the concrete core, then what we can do is we can let or redefine this equation by making sigma CI the subject of this relationship. So by doing so, then sigma CI will be equal to sigma CC times the ratio of ECI or the Young's modulus of CI respect to the Young's modulus of CC. So we can redefine this as equation three. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute equation three into equation, let's call this 1B. So by doing so, this is what we get. 40 is equal to into bracket 7.7754 times 10 to the power minus 3 times into bracket sigma cc times into bracket the ratio of ECI to ECC bracket close plus 0 0.0 uh, sorry 0 0.1886 sigma cc so all we have to do is to substitute known values so if we substitute the Young's modulus so don't forget that the units for E is GPA, so the GPA will come out leaving 205 divided by 10. And if we solve for sigma CC, we get sigma CC to be equal to 114.94 kilonewton per meter, which is approximately 115 kilopascals. So by knowing what sigma CC is, we can then substitute sigma CC back into equation one and so for sigma ci. So by substituting known values into our defined equation, we get the stress in the cast iron casting to be 2,356,446.742 newton per meter squared, which equates to 2.357 times 10 to the power minus 6 pascal, which is the same as 2.357 megapascals. And there we have it. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.